welcome to Sri Shastra. We have developed online courses for various subjects. This particular course is focused on the design of a multi-story RCC building. So this course will be helpful for the students who wish to learn in depth about various planning procedures, what are the steps of structural designing, the structural planning, the functional planning, and how to read and write the construction drawings and also designing of the entire multi-story structure. It is also great for those who are willing to uh, get skilled and are searching for better placement opportunities. This course can help you in understanding concepts and the basics of how the structures are being designed in the industry. Although softwares are mostly used now, but even to operate the software, one must understand what inputs are to be given to these softwares. For example, the geometry of the particular member of beams, of columns and the load criteria. So once you understand all these concepts in this course, you can easily design the structure in manually or even in the software. So the course will start from the functional and structural designing. Now functional designing is taken care of by the architects. So in functional design, the landscaping, the placement of the rooms, acoustics, lighting, ventilation and heating, all these aspects are taken care of by the architects in the functional designing phase. Once this is done, we move on to the designing by engineers, that is the structural designing. Now in structural designing, uh, the engineer must understand that the structure should be economical and the material used by him should be such that the structure can be made quickly and in the optimum cost. So the entire project duration and the cost will depend on how the structural designer work. Now in structural designing aspect, there are uh, there will be the planning aspect that is where and how the members are to be placed as well as what will be its geometry, how much material to be used, uh, will it be safe and will it be usable. All these answers are given in the structural designing process. Once we are through with this, we can go on to the structural planning. In structural planning process, the structural engineers will decide where and how the columns are located and how they are placed. What will be the orientation and what will be the span of the beams and slabs and where the foundation are to be marked. All these answers will be given in the structural planning phase. Once we know this, we'll move on to the understanding of methods of analysis. There are various methods of analysis earlier which was used was the working stress method, which is still used for the designing of overhead water tanks. But other than that, it was uneconomical. So now we are using the limit state method in IS 456-2000, the limit state of serviceability and the limit state of collapse methods are given in detail for designing of various structural members, which we'll look into while we are designing the entire building. Then comes the understanding of marking the components on the plan. As an engineer, you must understand how uh, and what are the various techniques of marking the columns, the beams, the slabs, all these aspects are to be understood by you uh, for designing of, of the structure. Now marking will help you in designing the structure in a way that you can group together the similar kind of elements which has the same geometry and the same loading criteria and these, these members can be designed together and hence you can save time in the design process. Then comes the entire multi-story structure design. In this particular lesson, we'll uh, take a standard plan. From that, we'll design the slabs. That is one-way slab, two-way slab. We'll then design the beams and as well as the columns. Now let us look into one of the lesson of the uh, entire course. In this lesson, we'll be learning about the marking of frame components using the private sector method. So let us see what are the various. Now in this method, the columns are marked serially as C1, C2, C3, or they can be encircled by numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on, starting from the 
top or the bottom left corner and it, it we have to go the rightwards and then downwards beams are marked serially as b1 b2 and so on starting from the first column and the slabs are marked according to the categories let us take a standard plan we've got 16 columns we'll start from the top left corner and we'll start with the numbering and circling and go rightwards as it says and then we'll move downwards you can see there is a zigzag pattern 5 6 7 8 and we'll again go down 9 10 11 12 again we'll go down 13 14 15 16 so this pattern is easier to read since we are used to reading from left to right and then down so each of the columns are marked like this then we'll move on to marking of the beams which will start from the first column b1 b2 b3 you can see now this is a secondary column we'll include it b4 then b5 b6 b7 b8 b9 b10 b11 b12 b13 so we've got 13 horizontal beams and then we'll mark the vertical beams now imagine this plan is rotated by 90 degrees to the right so this will become the first top left column so we'll start marking from here 14 b15 b16 b17 b18 b19 b20 b21 b22 similarly till b25 so we've got 25 beams uh, with one secondary beam now we'll mark the slab so slab will be grouped together all these slabs have similar geometry as well as similar loading conditions and these are two-way slabs so this symbol is used for the two-way slab which means the reinforcement is provided in both x and y directions and all these slabs are marked as s1 so you can design any one of the slab and the same property will be used for execution of all the slabs similarly these two slabs are one-way slabs the symbol is this for the reinforcement in one direction so s2 s2 is given so this is how the marking should be done generally there is also grid reference method and column reference method which are there in the course for you to learn uh, generally only grid reference method and the private sector method is used grid reference can be preferred when there is a symmetry in the planning or the designing whereas private sector method this method can be used when there is an asymmetrical kind of a structure where you cannot put so many columns in a single grid so this is how the marking will be done for various structure members now this is the frame that will be designing this building is a ground plus three story structure with rcc frame the columns and the beams are marked the design data for this uh, problem is floor to floor height is given as 3.35 meter the height of plinth above the ground level is given as 1 meter the wall thickness for external is 23 centimeter and for internal it is 15 centimeter these are the standard wall thickness which are used generally in in the industry the loads for roof will take roof finish of 1.5 km per meter square and the live load as 1.5 km per meter square and for floor we'll be using floor finish of 1 km per meter square and the live load of 4 km per meter square then we need to know the materials that we are using so the material for concrete is m20 grade concrete that is the characteristic strength of the concrete will be 20 newton per mm square and for steel we are using fe415 the reinforcement will have a characteristic strength of 450 newton per mm square next we should know the unit weights the concrete unit weight is 25 kN per meter cube and the masonry unit weight is 20 kN per meter cube and we'll be using IS 456-2000 code for design purpose now let us talk about the plan which we'll be using in this particular numerical of the design so it's a fairly symmetrical plan with 16 columns and we have got about 30 beams spanning in both directions with six secondary beams and rest of the beams are 
main beams and we have got three two way slabs and the rest of the slabs are one way the dimension of this bay is 6 meter even this is 6 meter and this is 6 meter all these bays in this direction the first is 6 meter the second is 4 meter and the third is 6 meter so we have got a building with a complete area of 18 meter by 16 meter now first we'll be designing the s1 slab then we'll move on to design of the s2 slab that is a two-way slab then you will understand how the load is transferred from these slabs to the beams then we'll be designing this entire beam frame including the columns using the moment distribution method and then we will move on to designing of the column so we'll be designing each and every structural component and how they act when they are put together in a building so that it is easier for you to understand how the structural designing work is done now this will not only help you in understanding the structural designing process but also it will help you in uh, deciding the geometry of the various members and this this information you can use to input in the stat pro or various structural analysis programs also you will understand a lot about how to use the is code and what are the various clauses which are to be considered which is very important while designing any of any kind of structure whether it be a residential or commercial all the criteria are given in the codes you can find the enrollment link for this course in the video description you can directly on enroll online there will be various quizzes and assignments in the future as well as there will be one-on-one -on -one doubt solving sessions for this particular course there will be closed groups with the mentor and you'll be able to clear all your doubts this course is good for students who are already studying the engineering as well as those who are already placed you can develop your skills by understanding how the manual designing process and the planning process works you can also share it with your friends those who need to learn the rcc design structure so thank you i hope to see you on the other side